Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Just Off The Highway. I'm Al Progers. Today we're in the southern part of the Gauteng province, a place called Vereenigen. Now the locals call it V-Town. It's an area of heavy industry, mining and hardworking people. This is not the kind of place where you come to indulge your social media sensitivities. Here, if you eyeball the wrong person, or if you even shout for the wrong team in the pub, you might as well step outside and blitz them yourself to save time. Actually, we'll be stopping between Vereenigen and its next door neighbor, Mayerton. Here's a bit of trivia. If you're of a certain age, Bless Bridges, the famous South African singer, once lived in Mayerton. See, this clip was worth watching just for that fact alone. But don't be fooled by stereotypes. There's so much more to V-Town and its surrounds. It's been the heart of major historical events. That's the Peace Monument. The Treaty of Vereniging was signed there in 1902, officially ending the Second Anglo-Boer War. Its inscription is wounded but not defeated, and it depicts the human spirit rising again after adversity. And this is the Sharpville Monument just a few kilometers down the road. In 1960, protests against the pass laws of that time and the shooting of 69 protesters by police led to a major shift in sentiment against apartheid, both here in South Africa and overseas. All of these events still echo through the South African landscape. They're filled with meaning and emotion and their memory should be preserved which makes it all the more bewildering that another monument, much older, right nearby, has been almost completely forgotten. Today, the main journey starts here. I've got permission from the Val Technorama Museum to visit a place called Redan. Now, I've got to stress that the site where we're going is on private property, so you need to organize a visit through the museum. And before you do, Take a moment to click like and subscribe to regular new editions of this ongoing growing wave of madness that I call Just Off The Highway. And if you can, please make a small contribution to help me afford to make even more episodes. Just click on buymeacoffee.com slash lprogers and follow a few simple prompts. It's quick, it's secure, and you can unlock some special benefits for yourself. We're coming to this rocky area, a sort of raised outcrop that catches the eye, because it's important for a monument to be visible. Here we are. This is a spectacular example of human art, and culture and skill, and even engineering. Seriously, look closer. It's simply known as the Redan Rock Art. It's a group of about 240 petroglyphs, ancient rock carvings. And once your eye adjusts, you'll notice that in the small area, they're pretty much everywhere. Now, up front, I want to acknowledge that I am not an archeologist, and I have relied heavily on some bits of information that I was able to access on the net, especially the work of Dr. Jeremy Holman, but I've also been lucky to meet an expert guide, Mr. Pietrus Meyer, who prefers not to appear on camera. From the bits that I've gleaned, every one of these designs is different, unique, and the overall style is distinct from hunter-gatherer art found elsewhere. Now, there are a few animals like lion and antelope, but the majority are abstract. There are many variations of circles, some with spoke-like stripes inside and others radiating lines outwards. Some have a central spot, 
Some are symmetrical, others not. Some are clusters of similar designs and others are a single bold statement. This is a powerful expression of human imagination. Now, decades ago, Jacob Brunofsky, the mathematician and philosopher, expressed that humans are not content to live in an environment, but we shape and decorate it to suit ourselves. I look at this and I see a work of such boldness, such permanence. Imagine the effort to chip and scrape the rock with iron or stone hand tools to express a complex thought. And this, the fact that this has lasted at least 200, perhaps thousands of years. This is fact and it's fiction and it's messaging, imagination. It's a guide, it's a handbook, it's a user's manual to the earth. Instructions, vision and social media all rolled into one. A recent study theorizes that this site was most likely made by the Kwisan people. Whoever the artist or artists were, they stayed in this area long enough to painstakingly make these engravings and to use them. These works were important, they were meant to last. There are things called cupules, that's what the experts call them. A theory is that they held water for some kind of ceremony. The fact that the site is close to water gives us a clue that it may have been an important element in the initiation of women. Maybe people decorated their bodies with, with designs similar to those on the rocks. So much is uncertain about the site. What we do know is that it's the last site of its kind in existence in Gauteng. There are no more and it's fading fast. Although it was declared a national monument as early as 1971, you can see for yourself how much effort has gone into protecting it. I found news articles claiming that the site is under threat from mining. I don't know. It's definitely being damaged by pollution, vandalism, felt fires, and of course, just the process of natural weathering. Mother Nature is eroding and weathering the stone. It's breaking up. In 10 or 15 years, it may all be lost forever. Mr. Meyer tells me that at twilight, if you stand on this very spot and listen carefully, you can hear the ancestors singing and drumming. How much longer they'll sing is up to us, I guess. So next time you're in the Feyenoging area, pause, it's got lots to see. And why not contact the Val Technorama Museum to organize a visit to see these? If enough people show interest, maybe this precious heritage can be preserved. After all, it's a monument, just like all the others in town. And if the function of a monument is to speak for those who can no longer speak for themselves, then this place has something very important to say. It's been calling out to us for perhaps millennia. The least we can do is care enough to pay attention. So drive safe, I'll see you soon, just off the highway. <laughs>